resource sharing via OSG, I'm going to talk about two things, sharing compute resources and sharing data. And uh, on the compute resources, in both cases, we are literally talking about uh, federations. And I'll, I'll clarify what we mean by federation as I go through the talk. In the compute federation, we are envisioning this sort of picture, which you've already seen yes in earlier today, where we have a, a researcher, they sit at an access point where they can then and decide based on their uh, 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 JDL job description and uh, thing we do, whether they want to run a local cluster or anywhere on various types of different clusters, including sharing. And this is what this talk about is about. How do you share? The CC stock clusters may join this federation to share resources is the message. So this is what it looks like. There's, there's 126 green dots listed on this map accounting for about 126, 160 million hours, um, but the, it, which translates into about 222,000 cores. But the real story is actually much more complicated than that because we have a variety of different ways that uh, uh, a resource can be shared into. This talk is about largely the open pool. However, I wanted to point out that um, you can use all of our tools also for your home use without sharing, meaning whether you are using our tools only for the people that you work with directly, or whether you're using our tools in order to share with the entire community is up to you. And I'll explain how that works as we move forwards. Um, first, uh, what do we mean by uh, federation? Federation to us means distributed control. It's really all about policy more than anything else. OSG works on three simple policy principles that resource owners determine policy of use. In other words, those who own determine those who use. Um, it means that all policy of use is set locally by the clusters that join the federation. There's no policy. You can delegate your decision making. You can say this fraction of my cluster average over time shall go to blah. And uh, that sort of thing of delegation is always possible. But fundamentally, you can resign whatever you've decided at any moment in time. It is your choice. Um, then inversely, resource computers, consumers specify the types of resources they're willing to use, how much RAM, how many cores. But also, um, I don't want to work with Timbuktu because I don't trust these people. And so uh, a a resource consumer at any moment in time can actually make decisions on, I want to only use blah, or I want to only, or I want to be maximally promiscuous and will use anything under the sun in order to get the largest possible throughput. This is up to the resource consumer to decide. Our job is then that we match the policy expressed by the owner with the policy expressed by the consumer and voila, science happens. How do we do this? We submit our own batch system as jobs into the local batch system. So we effectively make one HD Condor batch system out of many batch systems. Those many batch systems can be anything they want under the sun and we'll work with that. Um, user uh, jobs are submitted locally, they're queued centrally and execute anywhere that matches the requirements after the resource becomes available. So you're never going to be able, you're never going to be queuing somewhere and then those people decide, ah, to hell with it. I don't want these guys. And therefore uh, you will queue forever. That doesn't happen. That will never happen. Um, so OSG operates an overlay system, therefore, a service for all of science. Um, now switching to data federation, in principle, conceptually, we have similar kind of policies. We aspire, therefore, to some amount of analogy between data and compute, but the very nature of compute and data is so different that the uh, um, details are then different. And so I'm gonna explain a little bit. This here, we, you will recognize as a globe. Uh, the dots are where we have caches in our federation. So essentially, we are sort of a Netflix for open science, or maybe somebody said we're really a YouTube for open science because you provide the data, you provide the content you're not just a consumer of content, you're also a provider of content. We allow you to join this with your data and provide an origin 
to the federation, but we also allow you to consume the data that is in the, collabor in, in the uh, federation. And that data may be public or private, meaning it can be, as in LIGO's case, restricted to the LIGO collaboration, or as in LIGO's case, be public for everybody. And so the owner of the data determines how much of the data, what part of the namespace that they export into the Federation is public versus private. And um, the, uh, our job is that we make data accessible to the Compute Federation via the Data Federation. Um, so how does it work? What are the goals? People come with their data on their local storage system. We then export it into the Federation. OSU offers to operate data origin service. Um, I've said this already. OSU strives then to guarantee uniform performance across the nation by operating caches. The entire storage about caches and so forth is really about providing access to the Computer Federation. And in my mind, it has three goals. We want to hide access latencies so that random access to open files are mediated via local caches as much as possible, such that the speed of light doesn't kill the performance. We want to reduce unnecessary network traffic from data re reuse. Um, and you saw here, I have a reuse multiplier that we measure and, and it ranges from the, from the tens to the thousands. Um, so some of these different and kinds of data is accessed at every file a thousand times uh, or thousands of times. And therefore, the middle bullet is the most important one. And other one, other cases, we, in my mind, in many ways, for many people, is maybe the most important thing that we protect the data origins from overload. We organize things such that the caches are, be, are the access points rather than the origins. And therefore, given that our, our uh, potential access as fluctuations are enormous, your origin that you provide on, with your system as the origin of data does not get overloaded by a thousand people hitting it suddenly for some weird reason. You, you're not subject to the fluctuations in access modulo the fluctuations in modulo two or the first uh, fan out of the data off into the caches, meaning the cache mishandling is the only thing that hits your origins. And uh, we provide this overlay system as a service to all of science, just like the Compute Federation. Finally, sharing, I wanna stress, sharing does not imply quid pro quo. There's no implications anywhere ever that just because you consume, you must provide. Similarly, there's no implication that just because you provide, you must consume. Our basic notion is we will provide anything to everybody and um, then, people will fluctuate around and some people may be more of a provider than a consumer. And some people may be more of a consumer than a provider and it all evens out and science gets done and it's in the, in the overall national interest for science getting done and nothing staying idle. That's basically the, the message. And this gets me to the end of my talk. Um, and it's the same summer and conclusion slide as this morning. OSU's objective is to advance open science through distributed high through computing. We think given that we, when we talk to people, there are many different types of people and they look at us with different lenses. We find it useful to think of our customer portfolio, so to speak, in terms of four types of categories. And we went through those categories this morning. Um, always, in order to do this, we provide a diverse portfolio of services to support all of these different kinds of people. I'm making the bold assumption that the red stuff is the people I'm talking to right now, campus research computing organizations, or people like that. Um, and if you want de more details than you get uh, today and tomorrow, send email to support at opensidesgrid.org. Thank you very much.